Good morning, everyone, and again, we welcome you to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights. I am the Reverend Carla Commeter, and with me today is our Minister of Music, Lisa Lawson. Let us open our service by sharing our statement of being. Unity Spiritual Community is a place where all people are welcome and where differences are celebrated as the splendor of God's creative expression. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. And we'll move on to sharing today's daily word. And today is Sunday, November 15th, 2020. And the word for today is kindness. I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. The word kindness triggers feelings of warmth, connection, and love in my heart. I smile as I recall the way that friends family members, and others have shown me kindness. I feel again the gratitude and blessing I experienced in those moments. Gratitude, love, and a beautiful awareness of connection fill my heart and mind in a remarkably similar way when I remember kindnesses I've shared. The movement of electrons through a wire creates a current of flow. As kindness moves from person to person, it creates a flow of divine love. Both giving and receiving are essential to this current of love. So I look for opportunities to share acts of kindness. I welcome with a grateful heart the kindness that others share with me. And our scripture today is from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And the word for today is kindness. And we take a moment to let the energy of those words vibrate and resonate within us. And we engulf the idea of kindness. We own it. We give it and we receive it. And we know that it is of God. Amen and amen. So our Sunday featurette today is going to be about Hafiz. This is a book called The Gift, Poems of Hafiz, translated by Daniel Ledinsky. If you want, I can put this in chat, and then you can look at it. I'll do that as soon as I'm done with the uh, featurette. Hafiz was a 14th century Persian mystic and poet. Persia became modern day Iran. He was a Sufi master. Now, Sufism is the mystical heart of Islam. You may have heard of or even seen the whirling dervishes. Those are Sufis. And they whirl to induce a state of religious ecstasy. 
And a lot of times in the poems of Hafiz, he'll talk about being drunk. And I think that this is really symbolic of a state of religious ecstasy. Hafiz is still the most popular poet in Iran. They celebrate Hafiz Day every year on October the 12th. Now, the translator of his poems, the most popular translator, is Daniel Ladinsky. He uh, is a contemporary man. He lives in Missouri. He has written four or five books of his translations, or one might say interpretations, of the poetry of Hafiz. He has taken some criticism because they say that his translation translations are not literal. They are not the literal translations from Persian. But Ladinsky says that they capture the essence and the intent of Hafiz. And I say they are just so good that it's like an alchemical blend between Hafiz and Ladinsky that creates its own unique poem and, and ones that will resonate within you at a level beyond the everyday level. When you start reading poems by Hafiz, you get used to a certain style of vocabulary. When Hafiz uses the word, the beloved, that means God. In the poetry, he will refer to himself by name. He'll say, Hafiz does such and such. But sometimes he refers to himself in the first person. And sometimes when he's using the first person, it's God that is speaking. And sometimes it's hard to tell which it is. So I selected five of my favorite poems to share with you today by Hafiz, translated or interpreted by Daniel Ladinsky. And the first one is called In a Treehouse. Light will someday split you open, even if your life is now a cage. For a divine seed, the crown of destiny is hidden and sown on an ancient fertile plain that you hold the title to. Love will surely bust you wide open into an unfettered blooming galaxy. A life-giving radiance will come. Oh, look again within yourself, for I know you were once the elegant host to all the marvels in creation. From a sacred crevice in your body, a bow rises each night and shoots your soul into God. Behold the beautiful one from the vantage point of light. He is conducting the affairs of the whole universe in a treehouse on a limb in your heart. I got goosebumps. <laughs> All right, the second one is called This One Is Mine. This One Is Mine. Someone put you on a slave block, and the unreal bought you. Now I keep coming to your owner saying, this one is mine. You often overhear us talking, and this can make your heart leap with excitement. Don't worry. I will not let sadness possess you. I will gladly borrow all the gold I need to get you back. I know. And the next poem is called Like a Life-Giving Son. Like a Life-Giving Son. 
you could become a great horseman and help to free yourself and this world. But only if you and prayer become sweet lovers. It is a naive man who thinks we are not engaged in a fierce battle. For I see and hear brave foot soldiers all around me going mad, falling on the ground in excruciating pain. You could become a victorious horseman and carry your heart through this world like a life-giving sun, though only if you and God become sweet lovers. I'm going to let that set just for a minute. And our next poem is called Now is the Time. Now is the time to know that all you do is sacred. Now why not consider a lasting truth, truce with yourself and God. Now is the time to understand that all your ideas of right and wrong were just a child's training wheels to be laid aside when you finally live with veracity and love. Hafiz is a divine envoy whom the beloved has written a holy message upon. My dear, please tell me, why do you still throw sticks at your heart and God? What is it in that sweet voice inside that incites you to fear? Now is the time for the world to know that every thought and action is sacred. This is the time for you to compute the impossibility that there is anything but grace. Now is the season to know that everything you do is sacred. And our last poem allows us to end on a lighthearted note. It's one of my favorites. And it is called, We Might Have to Medicate You. Resist your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God. Otherwise, we might have to medicate you. In the ocean, a lot goes on beneath your eyes. Listen, they have clinics there, too, for the insane who persist in saying things like, I am independent from the sea. God is not always around, gently pressing against my body. And thus ends our Sunday feature event. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be more Hafiz in our future. And now we invite the lovely Lisa to sing us another song. Thank you, Carla. I just love Hafiz and the translations by Ladinsky. I'm so glad you introduced me to them. So this song, I Am a Light. We've done this many times in church. And I thought, well, will this work on Zoom? And um, we decided it would. It's a call and response. And so I sing, I am a light. And then you sing, I am a light, but the same thing. But of course, we can't hear each other. But you get to do it with me that way. So I'm not putting the words up, but you can just copy what I sing. In this world, in this world, in this world. 
shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm living love every day. 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 Spreading peace along the way. Spreading peace along the way. Right time, right time, right place, right place. Living love every day, every day. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light, I am a light. In this world, in this world, in this world. And now is the time when we uh, draw all of our concerns into our heart to bless our prayer requests. Let's just feel any of those concerns or tensions that we may be having. Recognize them. Hold them dear. We draw these concerns into the Christ presence, those for our loved ones, for ourselves, for the world, maybe for our communities, as we see things changing, um, as we go into the, the holidays and we're concerned about all of our safety. We just are enveloped in that kindness that we read about in in daily word, the kindness of those around us. We, we tap into that great love this morning. The love of God, of our community, of ourselves. And we rest in that spirit as release, we release all into the loving care of Christ's spirit this morning. Amen. We do have monthly wellness calling, which I know Stevie has been doing, and I'm about to make mine soon. Uh, so if you're not on our wellness, wellness calling list, please do email us, or if you have a special prayer request, email us at info at unitycitrusheights.org. And also, we always encourage you to make use of Unity's Silent Unity, which is the online prayer service. Well, it's online. You can use it online. There's an app called You Pray, or you can call directly at 1 800 Now Pray. And now let's prepare for a time of meditation. me 
to my heart's place, a place of ease and grace. Breathe in this moment, this sacred moment. I am peace. I am renewed. Allow yourself to relax. And take a couple of those deep cleansing breaths as we enter this time of meditation. Today's meditation is taken from A Course in Miracles. God is but love, and therefore so am I. This thought is descriptive of the holy self we share and now prepare to know again. This self alone knows love. This self alone is perfectly consistent in its thoughts, knows its creator, understands itself is perfect in its knowledge and its love and never changes from its constant state of union with its creator and itself. And it is this that waits to meet us at the journey's ending. We practice what an ancient truth we knew before illusion seemed to claim the world. And we remind the world that it is free of all illusions every time we say, God is but love, and therefore so am I. All things are echoes of the voice for God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am among the ministers of God. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. I walk with God in perfect holiness. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. I am as God created me. God is but love. And therefore, so am I. There is no death. The child of God is free. God is but love. And therefore, so am I. There is no cruelty in God and none in me. God is but love. And therefore, so am I. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. God is but love. And therefore, so am I. We allow this ancient truth to carry us into a time of silence.
God would not have heaven incomplete. It waits for you, as I do. I am incomplete without your part in me. And as I am made whole, we go together to our ancient home, prepared for us before time was and kept unchanged by time, immaculate and safe, as it will be at last when time is done. Now and forevermore. Amen. I dreamed of rain and the rains came, soft and easy, sweet and clear. I dreamed of rain and the rains came, and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of rain and the rains came. 
Thank you, Lisa. Awesome. Just awesome. Thank you. How do we know what is true and what is fantasy? One of the recurring themes in many of our talks is that the author or teacher we are discussing was suspected of fabricating the experiences being described. This strikes to the heart of our definition of reality and of how information is received while we are incarnate beings. We recently gave a lesson based on the book Mutant Message from Down Under and then shared that the author, Marlo Morgan, had eventually admitted it was fiction. But does that mean it wasn't true? Some of the founders of well-known spiritual movements, many of the founders of well-known spiritual movements, have come under suspicion. Madame Blavatsky, who was the founder of the Theosophy Movement, is an example of this. Our own co-founder, Charles Fillmore, presented some concepts so outlandish that they were omitted from his books by subsequent editors, only to be re-included in later editions. His theory of regeneration was one such teaching, and we'll touch upon that later in this talk. Some of the most cherished writings in the Bible were received in dreams and visions. And I could go on. All this is by way of saying that the story we are sharing this morning may require that you suspend your disbelief. And we're going to begin by talking about this book, Emissary of Light. I put this in the chat by James Twyman. James Twyman is primarily known as the peace troubadour. He's a musician. He, he sings and plays the guitar and goes all over the world and um, sings songs of peace. The subtitle of this book is My Adventures with the Secret Peacemakers. It was published in 1996. In the late 1980s, James Twyman traveled to war-torn Bosnia and made a journey to a secluded mountainous area. There he met a mystical community known as the Emissaries of Light, a secret society said to have existed for thousands of years dedicated to the eternal flame of peace and the banishment of fear and mistrust from the world. As the emissaries taught James their lessons, he learned an important truth, that despite war, cruelty, loneliness, and fear, peace is not just a dream. 
It is a powerful reality that already exists when, within all our souls. Peace is, in fact, our destiny. Twyman's discovery of this community in the deep woods has many elements of a fairy tale. He described it as a building at the center of a secluded settlement with a huge light-filled room, and on the floor of the room was the design of a wheel with 12 spokes. And 12 hours a day, there would be 13 emissaries, and you got the idea that they were the same entities that had been doing this for thousands of years. And 12 of them would sit around the wheel, one at each spoke, each radiating a different shade of light, like the colors of the rainbow. Or if you think back to our recent chakra meditations in the Wednesday night class. And in the center of the wheel was the 13 emissary. And as the light and all these colors flowed in to him, a great fountain of white light spurted forth and spread over the plain around the building. And this is all symbolic. Twyman learned that the emissaries had held this vigil for 12 hours a day over these thousands of years, not always in Bosnia, but always in places of violence and strife. The, emissa the emissaries believe that their work has saved humans from destructing themselves, that they have saved the world. And they also shared with him that their work was now complete, that humans had advanced enough to maintain life on earth and that they had called Twyman to them in order to teach him some lessons that he could share in the books that he wrote and in the music that he wrote and, and performed. I really like one of the first stories that they told him. And it was about a man who was alone in a dirty, god-awful dungeon. And the only human contact he had was once a day this big rough looking guard would come in and leave a plate of food for him. And eventually in desperation the man decided that he would attack the guard and try to escape. And in preparation for this he positioned himself by the door and he braced himself with his his hand on the handle of the door so he could feel when the guard was going to open it. But as he lay his hand on the handle he noticed that the handle moved. And so he pressed even more and he opened the door. It had never been locked. And when he opened the door, he crept out into the, the hallway outside his cell, and the guard was standing there smiling at him. And this is symbolic of the self-imprisonment of the human spirit. Now, you may have noticed in today's service, there is this theme going on. There's a theme from Hafiz, and it led us through A Course in Miracles, and now we're in the Emissaries of Light, and we're learning the same thing, maybe with different vocabulary, maybe with a different history attached, but it is the same thing, because these are divine, eternal truths. The way we have allowed our imaginary fears to prevent us from expressing all that we are was what was symbolized by the tale of the dungeon. As we are teetering on the threshold of this new age, 
we are like the man who just set himself free. We are finding our way in the real world, in the really real world. We are casting out fear and claiming our destiny of beings of light and love. This new awareness is often called ascension consciousness. We have already begun ascending. And so I'm going to share some signs that you can detect in yourself and in your life that you are crossing the threshold into this new consciousness. And they include having unexplainable feelings of well-being and excitement. Finding a greater ease in forgiving others and releasing the past. Having an increasing awareness of synchronicity in your life. Making new friends and letting go of old relationships, of many long-time relationships. This next one is one of my favorites. Experiencing a decreased desire to debate, to debate, judge, or prove political, medical, or religious theories. Noticing a shift in your relationship to time. Also experiencing shifts in light and size. And finding an increase at the number of nicer, friendlier people in your life. Ascension has been the plan all along. And it also includes a new relationship with animals. I am impressed at the numerous examples I see on Facebook of sentient, compassionate, animals. We see dogs rescuing turtles. We see ducks feeding fish. Seriously. We see these interspecies interactions that, that defy anything we have used to define the role of animals in the world. I watched a documentary, I think it's on Netflix, called Tales by Light. And one of the episodes is on shark petting with a group of people who do uh, scuba diving. And they have befriended some sharks and can actually pet the sharks. And so I asked you, shall the lion lie down with the lambs? In scripture, this is called the peaceful kingdom. And it's from Isaiah 11.6. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, and the lion, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Ascension includes our bodies and our planet. The purpose of the resurrection of Jesus Christ was to demonstrate the ascended body. Ascension includes resurrection into a body of light, although eventually it will be without dying, if that's what we choose, though death is not a failure. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, taught regeneration, and I think that it's the same thing. That we're talking about and he was determined to regenerate in this lifetime he lived to be over 90 years old had remarkable healings remarkable vigor in his book keep a true lint he wrote i now make alive all the cells in my organism by mentally infusing into them the christ consciousness 
this is the new birth which is transforming my body and raising it to electrical energy. This was carried to, was carried to its fulfillment by Jesus in the resurrection of his body. The next step in divine evolution is the spiritualization of the body or the ascension. And then Mr. Fillmore went on to say in one of the readings in Keep a True Lent called The New Race. The time is ripe for the advent of a new race, the advent of the spiritualized human. This will be brought about not by a miracle or by the fiat of God, but by the gradual refinement of the person of the flesh into the person of spirit. The true overcomer is qualifying himself to become a member of this super race. It is well for such a one to cultivate the childlike spirit and let go of all tense striving, even for spiritual things. In the realization of protecting, providing love, all the strain of fear and anxiety will be removed and life in abundance will then find easy entrance into the consciousness, bringing, bringing strength and health and eternal youth and life. Charles Fillmore did die, but he said on his deathbed not to worry. He would practice regeneration in his next incarnation. So we've talked about the fantastic, the wonderful, and the unimaginable. How can we take the next step in the right direction of our understanding? We do so by suspending. Suspend your disbelief. This is a term that originally was applied to stage plays where the audience has to accept the premise, the premise of the play, and suspend their disbelief of aspects of the plot or the set in order to enjoy the play. If we can suspend our belief in the ways of the world, and if we can suspend our disbelief in spiritual principles, we can experience enjoyment, enjoyment, a greater infusion of joy into our lives. So as we proceed together in this amazing journey into higher consciousness, and become aware of the many fantastic tales that represent humankind's dilemma and progress, we too become emissaries of light. And I encourage you to suspend your disbelief. Take the first step into believing in miracles, in synchronistic, in synchronicities, believing in the meaning that is imbued in every moment, believing in love, believing in an aware, loving universe that is proactive on your behalf. Let us suspend our belief in rigid ideas and practices, in any practice that violates any living thing, and in so doing, we can take each other's hands and trade suffering for joy. We will walk out of our self-imposed dungeons and claim the joy for which we were made. And thus ends the lesson. God bless you. I will trust in the Spirit. I will open my heart. I will always remember the truth of God. The
that has brought me this far. So lead me on this path of light, and every step I take. shine a light in the darkness I will bring forth a truth I will always honor the beauty and the light that I see And now we pre prepare for our love offering. So grateful for all of you, for all of your support that enables us to continue to bless the world in this way as we bring our hearts and our minds together to express the Christ in this world. So now um, I'm going to share the screen. 
so that we can say our prosperity prayer together. Here's Unity's prosperity prayer. Knowing that divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I choose to give, and all that I am open to receive. You may make your gift either online on our website, which is unitycitrusheights.org, or there is a button in our newsletters to donate, or you may mail your check to us at P.O. Box 2176, Citrus Heights, California, 95611. And now we take these offerings and we bless them, saying, knowing that, Unity spiritual community is a center of the Christ love, mighty to attract good and to radiate good to others. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. We have a few announcements this morning. As we shared last week, we have decided to turn our Lenten quarter drive into a Christmas outreach program. So we're asking that you convert the coins that you collected, deposit them in your own checking account, and then donate them to the church where we will keep them in a separate fund so we know how much was donated. We're trying to get this done by Thanksgiving so that then we can choose a gift from Project Heifer to send out by Christmas as our Christmas outreach. This coming Wednesday is the last of the regular classes for our Heroes Journey. And I wanted to let you know that we will be doing a meditation around the peace prayers from the book Emissary of Light because James Twyman, being the peace troubadour, shared many peace prayers in it. So even if you have not attended any of the classes, you're welcome to join us this Wednesday and to uh, enjoy that meditation with us. The holidays are right around the corner. Our first two events are on Wednesday, the 25th of November, when Lisa and I We'll have a special service of music and meditation in celebration of Thanksgiving and our hero's homecoming for our autumn journey. Then, as always, after the service, we will be staying on Zoom and chatting. So if you are here and present on Zoom, we would love it if you would stay until the end of the service and have time then to check in so we all get to know each other better. And now, if you'll please join us in singing the peace song. together together and let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god as creator family all are we
now for our prayer of protection we know that the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us the power of God protects us the presence of God watches over us wherever we are God is and all is well Got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing going on around here. You can see it on each and every face. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing going. Got a good thing going on. We got a good.